I can't imagine you have not heard of the Ordinary Soothing and Barrier Support Serum yet. The bright pink serum has been all over the internet for weeks now. It took me a while to properly test it though, as the effect on the skin isn't as easily to judge as it is with other products. Now that I'm ready though, is it worth your money? If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Anne, the physician passionate about skincare and well aging. The claims are quite vague. Help repair skin barrier, soothe discomfort and reduce the look of redness. But now that the cold has crept in, my tretinoin treated skin has a tendency to act up and I was eager to see if that could be helped by using this one. First things first, yes, it is as pink in real life as you can see in the pictures. It is on the thicker side, feeling like an emulsion and has a distinct nutty smell that I don't find particularly pleasing. You can use it both morning and night, maybe even both if you feel your skin needs it and I tend to do around half a pipette for my whole face. Don't worry, although it shows up pink on the skin, that disappears when you spread it. The more you use, the pinker it looks, but it never really stains your face. For the first few minutes it feels a little tacky on the face, but that subsides after a while, leaving the skin feeling soft and with something like a protective layer on top. I never experienced any pilling or any issues with other products I paired it with. Looking at the ingredient list you will find quite a few active components of different well-known plant extracts like Asiatico seed, Asiatic acid and Maricasic acid from Centella Asiatica and then epigallocatechin, galatyl glucoside and other components from green tea extract. There is also niacinamide with its many skin benefits and bisabolol for soothing. To help with barrier repair you will find sphingo and phospholipids that are part of healthy skin membranes as well as cetylhydroxyproline palmitamide which is a synthetic ceramide. While you won't find your typical glycerate or hyaluronic acid, the different sugars like sulic glucoside act as humectants for some extra hydration and both 4-T-butylcyclohexanol and hydroxyphenylpropamidobenzoic acid claim to reduce itching and burning of the skin, at least according to the manufacturer. The pink color apparently comes from the cyanocobalamin aka vitamin B12, but to my knowledge the data on its benefits when applied topically is sparse. The color is fun though. Now, it is really hard to judge if my skin barrier is healthier than it would have been otherwise, but over the time of me using it, I was under the impression that it was generally calmer than it usually is during this time of the year. Despite the nice blend of ingredients though, I'm not sure if it is something I feel I need to have in my routine permanently. In this it reminds me a lot of the neot modulating glucosides, one I tried last year, which interestingly enough isn't that much more expensive than this one. If your skin is acting up, it is reasonable to give it a go as it has both established as well as more innovative calming ingredients, but I don't feel like it is an absolute must-have. If there is anything you would like to add, please do so in the comments below. I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon, bye!